short story by Paul McCann, Bobo and the Rut Race Down Under. Bobo and Charlie sat in the four-wheel drive at the reception of the caravan park. Dano had gone into the office to check in. A man with a long hillbilly beard approached and began to talk to Bobo and Charlie. How's it going? Charlie replied. We're going on holiday. The hillbilly fellow looked at Charlie and said, Fair thing it might. You've come to the right place. Bobo reached out his hand and introduced himself. Nice to meet you. I'm called Bobo and this is Charlie. I know. Dano told me about you. I'm known as Ocker the Clocker in these parts. Dano returned and went over to Ocker and said, Good day, Ocker. Uh, you all set for tomorrow? No worries. All right, mate. See you at the track, huh? Ocker walked off, and as Dano got back into the silver four-wheel drive with the three bikes attached to the roof and a caravan in the tow, he drove to his spot and reversed the caravan into a small site before unhooking the caravan. Bobo and Charlie then got out and looked around at all their new strange surroundings. A couple of young lads on skateboards made their way past, followed by two people riding on horseback. Then a small group of people from various cultures walked past, with fishing rods and eskies in their hands. Bobo looked at Charlie and nodded. Charlie stood there, motionless. And Dano came over and he said, I'm so glad you two could come down under for a visit. So tell me, what do you think of the place so far? Bobo replied, I will to tell you the truth. It's the strangest place on earth I've ever seen. Charlie nodded his head in agreement. It's, uh, it's like so strange, Dano. Everything. There was a silence for a while. No one spoke a word. Until suddenly, a couple of kangaroos hopped from the bush and landed right in front of Charlie and Bobo, which made Charlie take off in fear. Bobo and Dano had burst out laughing. He thinks they're big ruts, Dano. Better go and get him. You get lost round here, said Dano. They both went searching for Charlie around the caravan park. It wasn't too long before they heard some Muffled cries. Somewhere out there in the bushland. They could hear Charlie's muffled voice crying for help. Bobo smiled and said, He's not that far away, Dano. They followed the sound of Charlie's cries and took them to a sandy track and then through the thick bracken to a place where the charcoal trunks of gum trees stood and up there among the branches was Charlie. I guess you haven't seen any of those big huge ruts, have you, Charlie? said Bobo. Charlie replied, I told you, Bobo, didn't I? At that moment, a young man on a train, kind of a thundering sound, roared past one of those trail bikes. Dano looked up and he said, Come on, Charlie, climb down. We'll go and grab a few burgers. Unless you want to try some of those wizardy grubs, mate, that live up the tree there. Charlie let out a high-pitched scream and fell down to the ground. Um, what's, what's, what, what you say, Dano? Bobo looked at Dano. What's a witchery grub? Dano replied, Good old Aussie Tucker, mate. You'll soon get used to it. After we eat some possum stew, you can go for a walk in the scrub. And if you like, maybe we can see some of the Aussie night creatures that live in these parts here. Tell you, there's no place on earth like it. Sounds great, said Bobo. No worries, mate, said Dano. Charlie was still lying on the ground where he had fallen and uttered some things between deep breathing and shrieking. I've had enough and I want to go home. Dano gave a wink to Bobo and he said, Gonna be dark in about five minutes. Most of the night creatures will be coming out of their dens and hideaways. So we best make tracks quickly. Bobo and Dano walked away. Wait for me, 
Hey, Bobo! Don't know! Wait for me! Charlie screamed, and it didn't take him long to catch up with him. After something to eat, things had settled down a bit. So, what do you think, mate? Oh, unbelievable, said Bobo. What's happening tomorrow, Donny? Charlie asked. Dano replied, We're going to have a look at the rat race with Ocker the Clocker. Bobo replied, Well, that's a rat race with no winner, Dano. Charlie looked a little worried and he said, Dano, do you, do you mean the kind of rat that uh, squeaks and, and has four legs and sharp teeth and, and a long wiggly tail? Dano replied, That's right, cuz. Except they're not just your normal rat. Nah, they're water rat. They mostly live around Blackwater Creek. Ocker's been hunting them for, for years. He really knows a good one when he sees one. Charlie was having trouble breathing now and, and sort of in mad shock. Bobo said, That sounds like an interesting day, Dono. Day at the rat races. I've never been there before. Does it get a big crowd? Dano replied, Yeah, mate. They come from all round to see them run. This time Ocker is one, a real flyer. He calls her Hurry Scurry. She's in the first race at Sandon Rice Track. That's the rat race track. And he reckons she's good enough to take out the race. He's been feeding her up on yabbies for weeks, running her at night along long leads in the sand. Charlie was breaking out in a sweat and looking very uncomfortable. Uh, I d- Dan, 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 what's... what's a yabby? Dano replied, Well, some here call him Crotchy, Crawdad, Craybo, or even Lobby, and they're come in different colours black, blue, white, brown, red, green, or mixed combinations. They're little crawfish with crab like pincers. Look, there's one! About to grab your big toe, cuz! Charlie let one big scream and jumped up about six feet in the air. Bubu burst out laughing. Then there was a knock on the door of the caravan. In walked Ocker, holding his pride and joy. Hurry scurry, the water rat. He held it up and said, Here she is, the fastest four-legged furriest little rodent ever to come out of Blackwater Creek Hole. Charlie made a dash for the door, and in a few seconds he had managed to scramble up on top of the roof of the caravan. Donna came outside, and looking up he said, Charlie, don't tell me you're afraid of little tiny rat. <laughs> She'll do you no harm. I'm staying up here. See, I, I don't get along with rats. Charlie replied. Well, suit yourself, mate, but she'll be staying the night in the van, so you'll have to either sleep on the roof, underneath the stars, where there's possums and bats and other creatures that come out at night. Charlie was getting a little more worried. Um, what's a possum, Dono? Possums? They're yeah, cute little creatures who live in tree hollows during the day, but at night they come out and jump on your roof looking for a fee or shelter. Charlie breathed a sigh of relief and said, Well, possums sound pretty friendly, Dono. Well, it's not them you have to worry about, cuz. It's the night of Dingo or the hungry fox that you have to worry about. They prowl around at night looking for a possum or another easy prey. So, if you happen to be on the roof with a possum, mate, you're fur game. Ocker came out and stood beside Dano, and he said, You can come down now, Charlie. Hurry, Scurry's gone back into her little box. Charlie slow, very slowly made his way down from the roof, and soon was in bed. The night left, and the morning sun shone down again. All the night creatures were back in their hollows. Dano called Bobo and Charlie to come out and have breakfast outside the awning, underneath, in the caravan. As they took a seat at the table, they overheard Ocker giving the last-minute instructions to hurry scurry. Later that morning, they all piled into the four-wheel drive and drove off for a day at the rat races.
They arrived at a large shed with the sign, Welcome to Sand and Rit, Rut Trek, placed above the door. On the roof of the shed sat a young girl who had to be the lookout, and her job was to watch for the police, and if she spotted them coming, she was to jump up and down on the tin roof of the shed, as to warn everyone and said that the law were on their way. For in days gone by, the police had raided the rat races and scooped up all of the money from the illegal meeting. At times, a lot of money was won and lost on a rat race. Charlie and Bobo went inside with Ocker and Dano, and they stood with 40 others who had come to watch the rat races. Bookmakers stood on chairs, offering odds for each rat in the race, and money was being waged as odds were put up on a board. Bobo and Charlie had a bet on Hurry Scurry, as did Ocker and Dano. There were ten plastic tubes running along, side by side, for the entire length and breadth of the shed. Each runner tube had a number that corresponded to the rat that wore a little coloured vest with the same number on it. And now, it was almost time for the rat race to begin. race caller asked for the runners to be placed into the chutes. The owners and trainers made their way to the starting chutes and placed their runner rat into the tube. All the rats were now under starter's orders and after the count of three all the barriers came up and off went the rats. Hurry Scurry drove to the front and went around the first bend. Charlie began to shout and scream, Come on Hurry Scurry, come on! Hurry Scurry never looked back. It finished well ahead of all the other nine rats. As Bobo and Charlie waited in the queue to pick up their winnings, Ocker gave them a wink and said, Well, come to the rat race, mate. The End